welcome to faith boosters get your notebook and pen ready get your attitude ready and your heart ready sit back and let's learn together all right let's pray and start our, our our meditation today heavenly father thank you for your word i enjoy the privilege of sharing your word lord because it is life it is life so thank you that today we get a dose of life i know that we've been receiving lots and lots but an extra one is good also to go may you open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us this evening in jesus name amen all right um so today i had I had prepared some things which i wanted to share what 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 but i feel in my heart um right before the broadcast that god was moving me to a different direction i'm bringing a word of encouragement and instruction both to you and to me so i don't even know which which scripture i'm going to focus on mostly but you're going to see the theme today i just sense god encouraging us god encouraging us to come to him to turn to him i think that for some of us we've tried our best to stay positive to be strong to uh keep our minds on god to keep our focus on god to but as some, sometimes you feel overwhelmed, sometimes you feel tired, sometimes you feel empty, sometimes you feel, ah, you, you don't know, sometimes you just feel, ah, I don't know what it is. But I, I hear today what, what I've, I've come to talk about, finding rest in God, finding rest in God and through prayer and communion with him. Um, so he's just saying, come to me. If, 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 Lynn, if Unu says she confirms that word and she's a very prophetic person but Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28 Jesus says to the people that were listening to him at that time Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28 he says come to me I even feel like I might get emotional I feel the heart of God this evening hmm? come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest God is such a loving father. He takes no joy in seeing you in pain. And you see, the thing is that we can't, we can't, we can't deceive God. Like we can put up a front for people to look like we're okay and we have it together and we feel kawa and we are in the mood to do what we are supposed to do. We're excited about the scriptures, about what. But he knows the pain of our hearts and he feels it as we feel it because at the end of the day, he lives in our heart. So the burden in our hearts is his burden as well. And he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Because the thing is that, god knows god knows that you're hurting god knows that you're confused or that you're just blunt like you what's the word like you're not excited about life there's nothing like you're there and yet maybe you have a responsibility to encourage to i don't know to keep positive right now at home you're the one who's born again you're the person of faith you're the one who should have the answers and you come up with them you can say the words but you feel a disconnect sometimes in your heart and then you feel guilty for feeling that way you're struggling in the place of prayer because when you go there you think that prayer is supposed to be a place where when you enter there fire 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 should be coming down from heaven i don't know what so you go there and maybe you doze off and then you wake up and you're like i dozed in prayer what is even wrong with me but let me tell you guys I have friends and family who are watching today who I'm very comfortable with. Some of the people who are watching today who I'm super comfortable with. First is my husband, Jeremy. My sisters are both watching, Claire and Nana. Solome is someone I'm very comfortable with. Angela Okulo is someone I'm very comfortable with. When I'm with those people, I do not feel like I need to put up a front. I can walk into a time of ministry and tell Angela, I feel absolutely nothing. Pray for me. And I know she will tell me the joy of the Lord is your strength. She'll tell me that the truth of the word of God. But I can be honest. But then there are people who I can't do that. When I walk in, I'm the pastor. I should have a word. I should smile. I should what? But you guys, God knows you so well. He, he knows you so well, weaknesses, faults, and then he loves you perfectly. He is determined to love on you. And he's saying, come to me. 
no way come to me god don't go to your friend some of you have been running around telling your friends to pray for you your family when money runs out your first temptation is to pick up the phone and send someone or you're already planning and looking at how things are going and you're like if they don't lift this quarantine i don't know how things are going to go and and you find yourself honestly running from friend to friend but God wants to be your confidant. He wants you to run to him. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to bring the troubles and be honest with him and say, Lord, I don't feel anything. And I want to. I mean, I'm honest with God, by the way. I will tell him, Father, help me. I don't even know what to say. I feel so empty. And yet, and yet I know the truth's in my head. But I feel so worn out right now. You know, he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. You know, it's like seeing someone carrying these heavy loads and you're like hey give them to me i'm stronger i can handle that give it to me and of course some people are like practically what does that mean it actually means going and you speak to your father genuinely come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest let me let me show you i i looked up the meaning of the word rest and to rest is to seize so that you can recover strength like some of us really feel like you have to always have the solutions, always be the one with the answer, always be the one with the encouragement that you even run out because you're not going to God to receive encouragement from him. He says rest is to, is to cease from work that you may recover your strength. Because when someone needs to rest, it means they are tired. Do you know that when you sleep at night and you rest, you give your body opportunity to recover its strength so that in the morning you have energy for the next tasks ahead. The place of the presence of God is a place of recovering our strength. That's why you must prioritize it. That's why you must go to him every single day as your priority. When things don't make sense, you run to him. When things are exciting, he should be the first one you tell before you tell your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife or BFF, whoever they are. Is that, hey, you come to me. God wants to be your best friend. Because let me tell you, no one knows you better than God. No one loves you more than God. No one is more concerned about you than God. Nobody and no one knows the plan for your life better than God. He says, come to me. I want to show you things to come. I want to show you things. I want to give you comfort. Sometimes God just wants you to come. And yes, yes, yes. I, I, Bear Roots is saying, it's like a child climbing onto the laps of a parent. Rest is to cease from work that you may recover strength. My child... Karabo doesn't, when she's at her worst, she comes dirty, what, just, mommy, I just want you to carry me, you know, and I, sometimes I'm tired, but every time I carry her, I just feel like, what a privilege, like this girl, she has come to me to recuperate, you know, and sometimes I'm tired, but the thing is that God doesn't grow weary, he doesn't get tired, he doesn't run out of strength, he is strength itself, he's the definition of strength and power, so when you come to him, it's like putting your phone in a charger, H a charger in the socket it draws from the power in the socket charges the phone and then you're able to use the phone when you run out of steam come to him but i'm asking that don't wait to run out don't wait to run out let me tell you a story of the day i ran out <laughs> um a few weeks before quarantine my husband had broken his leg and 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 then he had run out of uh pain medicine like the pain had gotten intense so i got in the car now that day I'd been doing so many rounds because there was so much to do. I drove around, I drove around. So I got in the car. I was dropping off one of my nannies who is not a living. So I drove and then the car started being funny. I'm like, ah, why is the, why is the car acting up? I knew we shall get to where we are going. The, the last thing on my mind was that I had run out of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't run out of fuel. I mean, I fueled the car and I'd forgotten that Tuesday had come and gone and I hadn't fueled because I fueled once a week. So I kept driving and then at some point in traffic jam in the rain at about 8 p.m., the car got stuck in the middle of the road. It stopped. When it stopped is when it hit me that, oh my goodness, I never fueled the car. I never fueled the car. And at that point, I called for help, Solome, Bambi, Mike Solome. She ran, came over with the driver. They tried to help me. Then as I was trying to, 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 to now the, uh, my border guy brought me fuel. I put in a little fuel that could move it, then the tire burst. You know, it was one of those nights. But I remember never forgetting that evening because as it happened, it was one of those moments where God actually speaks to you. He said to me, that's what happens many times to you, you B3, is that you run so quickly. You're thinking about, even when you're reading your Bible, you're thinking of how to teach people what you're learning. You don't come to fuel until you hit a, a point where you're just fed up of everything and you don't realize that it's because the tank is empty. Maybe right now you're struggling with your children. 
that tank is empty go to the chief parent he says he will teach your children your children will be taught of the lord go to him and tell him i'm failing with the children lord i need your wisdom let me tell you sometimes you don't hear a voice but you 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 realize like two days later that your grace with dealing with the children has become better or that your or maybe it's your spouse you don't know how to love them like even you you feel like you want love and then they also want love and you're just like father help me i don't know how to love this woman i don't know how to love this man right now don't wait to run out my friend schedule times with god and let don't think of them as a religious duty but let it be a time of refreshing don't be like me who ran out of fuel because the tasks ahead were too many and i had to get everything done even in this quarantine we can schedule ourselves so crazily that we leave out the most important aspect which is the place of refreshing the place where we come to recover our strength come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He says, come and learn from me. Take my yoke. It's easy. My burden, it is light. Why? When you come to God, he's not condemning and judging you. Never. He's simply loving on you. He's reminding you of who you are. He's reminding you of the promises he has made to you. Sometimes you go to God and all you do is weep for one hour. That is prayer. Sometimes that's what it is. It doesn't have to be that you're there. You know that, that yes, we should get to a point where if, if, if we schedule those times of recovery so often, like you have very good sleep patterns, you always have your energy high. But there are times when you've not slept for a while and you need to sleep a little longer and your sleep is very extreme. And so some, some of us right now need to go to Jesus and just let him recover you. Let him recover your strength. Let him love on you. Don't go there to just be breaking and binding and pulling down and what? There's a place for battle, but there's also a place for rest. And it's all those things are in God. They are the facets of the presence of God. But, but today I specifically feel that God is saying, come to me. Recover your strength. Let me be your confidant. Tell me what is breaking your heart. Bring the confusion to me and I'll exchange it for wisdom. Bring the pain to me and I'll give you rest. Bring the, and, and just come to me. Don't come to, I don't know, whatever picture you have of God. Come to me, your father, your loving father, your powerful loving father who has all the resources, who loves you, who's looking out for you. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Remember, rest is to recover strength. Rest is to seize activity that you may recover strength. The challenge that, I am, that I'm giving to you and to myself is let's schedule our time with God and protect it as a place where we go to get answers for life's questions. Let God be your first call. He says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me. Again, do you hear how personal it is? Call to me. Like me, me, me. He's not saying call to the Lord. It's like, he's like, call to me and I will answer you. Can you imagine? It's like, I hear, I hear such a desperation from a person who loves you. Like, look, I'm your, it's like if you found out, and now I'm one of those people where my friends will find out that I had been in so much trouble and they didn't know about it. And it would break their hearts, you know? Be like, why didn't you tell us you didn't have food? And I'd be like, as in, I was going to be fine. But you see, God doesn't want you to act fine. He knows you have a need. He's like, call to me and I will answer you. God is not in hiding. He's not telling you, call to me and I'll think about it. Call to me and I'll see if I'm in the mood. Call to me and it depends on how many requests are out my desk. No, he's like, call to me and I will answer you myself. I'm not sending a representative. I'll not send an angel. I'll not send over who. I'll not send who. I will answer you and on top of answering you, like, I promise you, this is my vow to you, that if you will honor me by coming to me, I will answer you, and then I will show you great and awesome things that you don't know about, that your friend doesn't know about. Let me tell you, there are things, there are wars that your friends cannot help you to win. There are pains in your heart that your friends can never understand and feel, but God feels them and he's with you in that battle trying to help you to come out of it. That call to me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you know nothing about. Call to me. God wants us to call to him. God wants us to turn to him. God wants to be the first one we run to. He wants to be the one who we take all our confusion to. He wants to be the one who we laugh with, who we tell that the father, the, the first, the answer that has come before you text a friend. Could you stop and say, Father, see what has happened? You know, he wants to be, because let me tell you, God is so limitless that it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you will reach him immediately 
taina network connection taina wi-fi issues taina over off days bad mood good mood god is always in a mood to answer you he's like call to me and i will answer you i will show you great and awesome things that you know nothing about do you know why he says he then will show you great and awesome things that you know nothing about is that he knows everything concerning your life where you are right now um Oh, Tina says she once ran to worship her Nadia just to cry to God for about two hours without saying a word and then she went back home very refreshed. Yes, I've also had those sensations of weeping where I go to God and I don't even know why I'm weeping. I'm just so burdened. There are no words to explain my burden. That, that we are, Melinda is saying we achieve more when we come from a place of rest in God. It's true that sometimes we are under so much panic that we are trying to fix things but, but he's like, come to me. Because I know everything concerning your life. Right now, what is a confusion to you? God finished it before you were born. You see, God stands at the end of your life and sits with you in heavenly places where everything is settled. So I want you to know that even right now, what is going on that is so troublesome for you? If you can take it to God genuinely and real keep it there without now trying to fix it, but you go to God and do what you sense is coming from a place of peace. If nothing else, the first thing God promises is the peace of God that passes understanding will guard your heart why 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 guard your heart why does he protect your heart first because life flows from your heart because once your heart is in a place of chaos guess what happens the enemy has access to your mouth to start accusing the people around you to start being offended bitchy you know it, it's just he wants to guard your heart so the first thing that happens when we go to him is we find rest. Claire Atieno says, uh, has quoted the scripture, for the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel has said this, in returning to me and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and trust, you find your strength. You guys, these situations that we are going through, God is going to outlast them. That's why he's the one you should go to because he knows the answers. It's like when you struggle with maybe Microsoft Excel, you call your friend who knows Excel. And they're like, relax, relax, now click here, now drag down, have you got the answer? You're like, yeah, Mananga, I tried so many options, but they knew the answer. All you needed to do was call that friend, and if they answered and told you, the thing would be fixed. If nothing else, there's a guarantee that you will have peace. I sense that there are some of you who have been struggling with peace. Even sleeping at night has been so difficult. You try to sleep, your mind is trying to find solutions to tomorrow's problems. Go to Jesus today. Go to Jesus today. Find a quiet space in your house, even if it's the toilet. Close it. And if all you need to do is weep, weep. Sometimes there are no words. Even the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that words cannot utter. Like, it's okay. God is not looking for you to bring him good English or good French or good whatever. He's just like, come to me. Come to me. I have rest for you. Come to me. I have the answers for life. Come to me. And don't come to me pretending to be strong. Don't be an adult. Come to me, my beautiful child. Come to me, my son, my daughter. With the issues that you're facing right now, I will give you rest. I will help you to recover your strength. I will refuel you for the journey ahead. Maybe you feel like you've been left behind. Everyone seems to be having a new skill, a new idea. People are making progress. You feel like, I'm trying, but I'm not making progress. Go to Jesus. He will show you. He will show you. He will show you. He's available. He's willing. He's, <laughs> he's resourceful. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And as, I, and, and as I even come to the end of this, in, 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 in Psalms uh, 46, verse 1, he says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, because God is our refuge and strength, we will not fear. Because God is our refuge and strength, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed. God is our refuge and strength. The word refuge means a shelter from pursuit. Maybe some of you feel like the devil has been pursuing you in a certain area of your life or even different areas. Like when you catch a break here, the next thing catches fire. You put out this one, the next thing catches fire. That God is a safe shelter from pursuit. He's a safe shelter from danger and difficulty. Like even an army, sometimes when the attack is too much, the commander tells them to take cover under a good shelter, a refuge. Like sometimes you need to regroup and breathe. And maybe for you, the way you are in life, you've been told to be so responsible that you cannot settle. You have to be figuring out or fixing something all the time. And it's so difficult for you to stop and just go to God and say, I'm tired. I've run out. I need help, Lord. I don't even know what I need. He's saying, I'm your refuge. When the Masasi are coming nonstop, he's a refuge. 
He's a strong tower. He's a refuge. You can go there, and when you're under that refuge, the enemy cannot touch you there. He cannot touch you there. He's like, I'm a refuge. I'm your refuge. I'm your strength. I'm a very present source of help in time of trouble. Like when your friends run out, your parents run out of wisdom, your boss doesn't know what to do. They've laid you off of work. I don't know what you're facing, but I sense that there are people here who are facing some stuff that is really significant to you. But I want you to know that to God, he knows that it's significant to you. But in light of who God is, that thing is really not a, as big a deal as you think it is. Maybe you have a child who you've done everything you know how. You've tried Chiboko. You've tried to speak. You've tried to bind. You've prayed. You've done Thanksgiving. You've spoken life. You've called counselors. You've done and you're like, you people. You say your children are taught of the Lord. Me, I don't know which Lord is teaching my children. Let me tell you, God is a refuge. You can go there. I don't know how many times in this holiday season I've gone to God with guilt of having said what I shouldn't have said to my child or raised my voice or acted impatiently. Or And I'm aware. The thing is that I know I've done bad, but uh, I go to him and say, Father, grace. Grace to parent your children well. Grace not to scar them for life. There are times I've gone to God and said, Lord, I pray they'll never remember those words I spoke ever again in their lives. And I know that he's there correcting my wrongs, giving me grace. That's why he says that goodness and mercy pursue you all the days of your life. It's not just goodness. We get excited about the goodness. But God's goodness, which is his favor, and his mercy, his mercy, like for every failure, they pursue you every day of your life. Because God knows we need mercy. God knows we need mercy. As much as we need goodness, we need mercy. That they pursue you. God is not angry. He's not aloof. He's not hiding his face saying, mm -mm, you last talk to me which week? Go away. You've been watching bad cities. I don't want to see you. No. He's just been there. You've been feeling like, come and talk to me. I want to tell you some things. I just want to spend time with you. Come, let's hang out. It should then need to be religious. You can put on music if you like music and just be there with Jesus and tell him how you feel and crack a joke. And then when your mind goes off, you say, oh my goodness, Father, my mind went off. I'm so sorry. You know that I love you. This is our time together. He's so good. He's so wonderful. He's so loving. He says, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. His presence, in his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence is recovery of strength. In his presence, at his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. There is no better place to find recovery, recuperation than it is, than, it, than, than, than the presence of the Lord. So maybe you've been going there, here and there. Maybe you've been feeling guilty and you've stayed away from God. Maybe your prayer times haven't been shambalakalakashata, you know, fireworks. So you feel like you've backslid and because there are no fireworks. You in your relationships with your friends, do you always have fireworks? Every time you meet your friend, do you feel your heart beating so fast? You don't know what to do. No, the true friends are the ones who we can be with and have no conversation. The true friends are the ones we, the ones we can be with when we are at our worst and tell them, I don't want to talk to you, just sit there or send me food. That's a true friend. Now, there's a friend that sticks closer than any friend you've ever had, and that's Jesus Christ. You don't need to hide from him. Come out of hiding. You're safe with him. He's been waiting for you. He wants to rejuvenate your strength. He wants to give you wisdom for the journey ahead. He wants to comfort you. He wants to give you assurance of peace. Okay? Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. His promise is rest. His promise is rest. His promise is rest. His promise is peace that surpasses understanding. It may not be the answer you're looking for, but let me tell you, you will live refreshed. You will live not burdened. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thank you for being here today. Go and spend time with Jesus and be in his presence. There comes my husband. Um... <laughs> yeah just joined you for the prayer alright Jeremy please pray for us as we close <laughs> I just um, I was listening to the broadcast from the room and mm. somebody is bringing your your big boy pants and your big girl, girl. pants to God um, you're trying to be strong before the one you need to be weak you're trying to be strong before your strength Oh, ho, 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 wow. So God is your strength, but you're trying to show him that you are strong. Mm. 
yet he wants to be your strength. Yeah. So um, maybe that's a word for someone. You you should receive it. Amen. Before you pray, um, guys, who did their homework? I told you not to come here if you had not done memorized Deuteronomy 28. Anyway, today I'm supposed to comfort you. Let me leave you. But next week I'm coming for you. Um, amen. All right. Okay. So let's pray. Father, we thank you because uh, your word says that in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. And in this time, we remember every person that is weak, that is struggling in this season. Maybe they are struggling with regret because of past decisions they've made, maybe bad financial decisions that have plundered their finances in this season. I, I, I am seeing somebody who stays alone and is so lonely in this time. You severed your connections with your family and you've been alone. You stay alone and you're feeling very lonely in this season because of those decisions that you've made. Somebody is feeling like, where are all the people that have supported in, in financial difficulties? Where are they in this time? They're not coming back to support me in my time of difficulty. God is, is, is encouraging you and is strengthening you. He is encouraging all those who feel tired. I'm seeing husbands who are frustrated of being at home they are not earning and yet they are being they are being asked for money for onions and money for tomatoes and money for all sorts of things and you are frustrated you can't wait to get out of this place you have your home has become a place of discomfort for you he says find rest in me come and rest in me i am your source of strength mm. i am your source of encouragement you can trust me you can hope in me mm. because i am an ever present help in time of need father we choose to look to you in this time, in these difficult times, we choose to trust in you because we know that you are above every circumstance and every situation. I pray that tonight, before we go to rest, that any person that is on this broadcast and is feeling very tired and frustrated, that tonight you will give them a word. Yes, Lord. A word from the heavens to encourage them, mm. to strengthen them, mm. and to show them that you love them. Mm. That you have loved them with an everlasting love. Yes. And that you have drawn them with your loving kindness. Mm. May they wake up tomorrow morning with a new hope, a new zeal, a mm. new encouragement. May the joy of the Lord be their strength like your word says. Your word also says that may the weak say, I am strong, mm. in Joel chapter 2. And Father, we declare in Jesus' name that they are going to declare, that they are going to declare that they are strong. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jeremy. And as Jeremy prayed, a scripture came to my heart. I think there is someone watching. You might have just even tuned in right now at the end of the broadcast. And your eyes have been on another person, like a human being to help you. The thing he said of where are the people who I always helped, how come they're not coming through for me in this time? And that's why God has said, come to me. Don't go to, don't take your eyes off those people. So the scripture is in Jeremiah 17 from verse 5. And you can go back and study it. That's why he says, come to me. Take your eyes off people. Otherwise, you're going to be offended at people. You're going to be offended at people. God is your source. He's your strength. He's the one who will take care of you. Don't allow your heart to get stuck on a human being. He says, thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man. Wow, that bird. Wow. <laughs> cursed. Is it considered a bird? <laughs> no. Go away, you cheap bird. Cursed is the man who trusts in <laughs> Oh my God. Who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart departs from the Lord. That when your heart is, when you, when, you, when you trust in man, your heart departs from the Lord. Your heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes. Why? His eye is on, the, is on the, another man, not on the Lord. Even when good comes, he can't see it. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness. Eh? That's a bad picture. In a salt land which is not inhabited. Then verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And whose hope is the Lord. Not whose hope is in the Lord, but whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when it comes. But its leaf will be green. And will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Jeremiah 17, from verse 5 to 8, you can go and look at it one more time, okay? Take your eyes off of man. Some of you need to release some people from debts. And you don't need to call them like debts of the heart. Of They've not checked on me. They've not even what? They've not done what? Like you feel like they're indebted to you. No, the debt that they have is love and God is love. He's saying, come to me. Take your eyes off of human beings. 
come to me me i have the real thing you need i will give you rest i will give you comfort i'll give you wisdom i'll supply your needs come to me not to another human being let me be your confidant let me be the one who you depend on all right bye guys thank you for joining us see you later hi welcome back from that how was it i hope you're inspired and all fired up and ready to take action remember the magic is in the action so do something this week with what you've had remember to subscribe to my channel share with a friend don't learn alone and of course i'll see you again next week with another faith booster see you